now let's talk about the fourth factor uh, which is critical uh, but but which is o- often overlooked i say this this factor is critical because this factor has an ability to create a self doubt uh, in in every one of us uh, the, the the factor that i am talking is called emotional well being in in other words it's also called emotional resilience and and this emotional resilience works so uh importantly at at workplaces now as a, as newcomers we will all have apprehensions uh, because we are in a new environment and and we'll have a little discomfort uh, as you are among a completely new set of people so it is it is pretty common but but you know this this is manageable by building the right strategies uh, to enhance your improvement i i i said something about self doubt Uh, why i say that is you no know, uh, it, it it reflects my time when i came uh, into this country a few years ago so where i had um, I, i had a little struggle in in terms of adapting to the new uh, work culture even even adapting to uh, a completely new language you know sometimes you know, different communication styles the communication styles will will change for uh, uh, definitely change will change from from the place where you came from and, and and of course because you are in a completely new environment the work culture will also change the work the change in work culture will not necessarily be the change in the demographic or, or the geography and you will observe this uh, change in work culture even if you move from one company to the other company so which means that building this emotional resilience will not only help you settle down in, in a new country but it will also help you uh, thrive in a new job uh, that that you are getting into uh, as you progress in your career so so it is that is why i say this factor is critical but but it is often often overlooked so we are talking about adjusting to a new work culture different language communication styles and even perhaps a different language the reason i say language is although we are speaking english uh, in in many terms the kind of vocabulary the articulation and and you know the accent uh, all all could be something different because here we see people from different cultures and the accent that each one of them speak will be diverse so therefore uh, sometimes uh, as you come across different people understanding their accent could be a challenge so that's why i say perhaps uh, the challenge could also be even with different language so initially i had these hiccups or or i have these i have these challenges and it made me feel overwhelmed uh, by these changes and and which led to stress and of course decreased productivity so when my productivity decreased that's when i went into the self doubt that am i the same effective person that i was uh, uh, at the place where i came from so i uh, did i make the right choice of getting into an environment like this to uh, become less productive than than what i what i personally was yeah to like i said uh, uh, these apprehensions can be uh, overcome by my building a manage uh, they become manageable with with right strategies so now since i i talked about my experience let me tell you what are the micro habits that i developed around uh, building the emotional resilience is uh, i started by reflecting my daily actions you know which i call daily self reflection so which means i advise you to take some time maybe at the end of the day to reflect on what your interactions were who who did you interact with what the interactions were how did, how did they go and how did you interact with your customers or how did you interact with your colleagues what your what were inter- your interactions with your neighbors or someone who whom you met uh outside or elsewhere so reflect on different uh interactions you had throughout the day and that will help you understand what went well and and what you should improve the next day and and trust me uh building uh developing this habit will definitely enhance your emotional intelligence to become more productive not just at work with with, with every place and every person that you are interacting with the second one is this is time tested uh, habit uh, which is ta- task prioritization and you might have heard this million times in your life that it is so important to be a morning person so although i have heard this several times 
I, even if even I try to become a morning person to wake up as early as I can, uh, it, it is uh, uh, off late I realize I am not a morning person. But I don't wake up too late as well. But uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, how you adjust your uh, how you adjust your lifestyle uh, because it's different for all of us. The important uh, habit that all of us have to develop is about prioritizing our tasks for the day. So start by defining the most critical tasks. So this is where the time management techniques of identifying what is urgent, what is important, what is urgent, what is not important, what is not urgent, but still it is important. And what is not urgent, what is not important. So, so the, the four uh, grid factor, the matrix, uh, you can adopt that or you can just do it by yourself saying, okay, this task is important for me, but it is not urgent. So can wait or, or although it is not urgent, but it is important, but it cannot wait to take the priority. So do the task prioritization uh, and it will ensure that you know, the practice of doing this task prioritization will definitely help you become effective at your work and your studies and, and building interpersonal relationships with others because you know by practicing this you will get to know what are what are the tasks that you that that need your immediate attention and what are the tasks that you know uh, you, you can wait for for your response i'll give you an example so when i was working uh, my uh, as 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 and when i logged in the early in the morning i had my outbox filled with hundreds of emails no 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 not uh, i i may not be responding to all the all these hundred emails but uh, the practice of prioritizing tasks in understanding what is the important one that I need to respond first and what are the other ones that can wait to the later part of the day or, or maybe they can spill into the next day really help me become more effective and, and not, not just being personally effective but it also helped me prioritize the team activities and, and demonstrate my uh, uh, teamwork ability in, in a work environment. So that's why I, I recommend Practice task prioritization at the beginning of the day and reflect on how your day went by doing a daily self-reflection at the end of the day. Maybe you can do that a few minutes uh, before the before you go to bed or, or whenever you feel you are comfortable with. And the third uh, micro habit that you can develop within um, this emotional building emotional resilience factor is building healthy boundaries. Now, what do I mean by building healthy boundaries? It is, it is your responsibility to draw that thin line between what are your work hours and what are your personal personal hours. So, what are off work hours? What are work hours? So, when you have this differentiation, try to give your best at uh, during your work hours. So, so that that shows that you are effective at your job. You are effective at what the work that you are doing. And then having the thin line drawn, so you you also becoming effective your own uh, doing your own personal things in your personal life. Maybe giving quality time to your family, or spending quality time for your own self development. Maybe somebody want to uh, go and spend some time in in in, in becoming more healthy person by uh, joining a gym or 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 doing some healthy uh, tasks or thing. So. Take, take the time, so draw that line between when when do you stop work, what is your personal time, what is your work time, and then uh, uh, draw that healthy boundary. For example, uh, I, I, I practice this by telling myself that I don't have to look at the phone, get engaged with any Instagram reels or, or anything after 7 o'clock in the evening so, so I can spend quality time with my kids, uh, fill build that family bonding and 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 and, re and playing with my kids could be one of my stress relievers so that, that that's how uh drawing that healthy boundary not to think about work or, or not to log into your system and, and do something unless it is very urgent takes more priority than anything else at that moment i i always try to keep uh, my time in the evening for for my kids take them for swimming classes take them for skating classes spend some time in one or the other way with them that way whatever the stress i have built uh, at work during the day gets relieved by by the time i go to bed so it helps me do and self reflection on have i done everything that that i expected to do today uh, have i done everything that i have prioritized to do today 
and and that br that brings a kind of satisfaction to go to bed with a uh, lot of uh, satisfaction of completing there there could be some days where i might not have achieved everything that i planned for that day or i might have achieved some or i might have achieved everything so every day is different no you know that's common and the fourth uh, micro habit that you can develop uh, within this is like i said even in the last habit active listening now active listening is so important because canada is a culture where they encourage conversational type of communication it's not just one way of somebody giving you guide guidance on or guide uh, guide you on what to do or how to do it's about conversational so so you have to engage in conversations like if you reflect back i was talking about small talks that will help you get into the conversation with different people in, in the canadian culture practice the small talks and and be an active listener during that small talk so that will help you build an interpersonal relationship with the other person that that you are actively and attentively listening to what they are saying and how you can demonstrate demonstrate your active listening is by asking right questions or or uh, acknowledging uh, the facts that they are talking about and, and and show that you are you are listening to them and that will help build that interpersonal relationships not at work but it can also build a, a good interpersonal relationship with your neighbor with somebody in your community or or some stranger that you meet uh, at your gym or or, or your health a fitness center or or maybe when you are taking a walk in the park it helps everywhere so practice active listening so that builds trust you know active the other uh, important uh, uh, factors of uh, being an active listener is that you know it builds rapport and it builds trust very quickly so which will lead to more effective and and being an active listener at work will definitely build an effect on harmonious workplace and harmonious relationships at workplace as well and last uh, the fifth uh, micro habit that you can work around with this factor is learning about the language you know, we, we discussed this in our last habit as well spend some time each day learning uh, about your profession so learning something new about your uh, vocabulary within your profession or your field and, and which will help uh, in communicating with your peers or your customers or your uh, stakeholders more effectively showcasing that you are more knowledgeable about what's happening in the industry and the use of right language uh, will will help you build uh, your customers trust quicker than uh, sooner than later and and that's how you it will label you as an effective communicator which, which is very important in in um, uh, Canadian workplace to be a conversationalist than than being someone who takes uh, uh, the discussions on on one sided. So integrating these habits uh, will not only make you a value team member, uh, but it will also make you a favorite amongst the other uh, team members or your customers. And, and for for being so attentive and effective in in uh, providing great service to your customers. So the customer is is in, in general context is very widely used the word but but when you talk about customers they can be your team members they can be your neighbors they can be somebody who you are interacting with a customer can be your 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 manager your direct manager so uh, more than customer i would say with, with the other person whom you are interacting with so it it will help you build that harmonious relationships with them which is important other building relationships is important in a new environment for somebody to thrive in a new environment like Canada, especially when 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 you are in a work environment, either at college or 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 a professional work environment, or being on your own, building that real relationship or showing that your interpersonal relationships and and your ability to communicate as a conversationalist is really important. And and practicing these micro habits will definitely for help you find a new rhythm uh, in, in a new country and, and it will help you understand the culture and finding your place in it.